And that's uh, really all from us tonight. Join us tomorrow night at 5 past 11. Enoch Powell, a man whose interventions have turned more than one election, will be talking about this one. And we hope to have a report on the Williamsburg Economic Summit. We leave you tonight with a comment on the campaign from an age when both the politics and the comment were, if anything, a bit rougher than they are today. And so, to bed. There has been called forth a great choosing, an election general that the Commons might make vote for who shall govern them for the realm of the next lustrum. There are presented to the Queen's subjects three great factions or parties of persons banded together in mutual accord, each faction standing one of his number forth in every poll, parish and constituency in the land. The faction of Her Majesty's late Chief Minister is broad-numbered, claiming especially unto itself right reason, the virtue of ordered governance, and the management of goods and trafficking by persons of rank and tone. It is led by Margaret, the goodly wife of Grantham in the county of Lincolnshire, a dame of terrible aspect. Like a good huzif, she will dry up the wet vessels in her kitchen cabinet and put them sharp away upon the back shelves. Mistress Margaret ever attends matters backward, she expends great and lavish sums of the public purse upon huge and loathsome machines of war, so that she is a lover of peace. She maketh great and savage cuts in the expending of monies for the hospices and schools, so that she is a lover of health and learning. I rejoice, I think, that she is no lover of mine. The faction next puissant in following arrogateth for itself qualities of mercy, compassion, liberality and spendings for the indigent, and a common ownership of the marts and exchanges amongst all people. This army is generaled by good father Foot, the valetudinarian start crow of Hampstead Village, in which place he is to be remarked ever bestriding the turf ahead of his faithful mongrel, Kinnock, and to his dog, Dizzy. Father Foot whose voice doth rasp and splutter, all like a mallard with the asthma, has made much promise to find work for the many millions of the commons presently without occupation. I think mayhap he will, for many already have a job understanding a single word he utters, which is of little matter, since that every word he says is by his party straightway countersaid to the deeper perplex of every voter. It is a wide, wide chasm that yawns between these two great adversaries, yet... Down in the bowels of this yawning gulf, there lurks a third contestant party, which itself causeth many wide yawnings. This party has broken the mould in British politics, and hence our politics is the shapeless heap of jelly we discern today. To see Squire Jenkins, their bibulous and apoplectic bear leader, attempt the common touch of visiting the youth of Brixton Hill, a kissing of wet infants and a quaffing of rough ales in a town ordinary, is a sight to kill a man with laughing. A fish would fare in a desert to better vantage than this man in a market street. So now must every Briton make choice from out these three. Every Briton, saving your pardon, but the lunatic or the criminal, who are allowed only to stand, not to cast vote. Enough. Now to my chambers there to bathe my temples in vinegar water and shut this noisy world away. <laughs>